Hey everyone, it's Alexander Robinson. Welcome to the channel. So this is not my usual location because I am actually in Universal Orlando Resort at the moment. So that's why you haven't gotten any new videos recently outside of my list of the 15 favorite movies and TV shows I like to watch on Halloween. But for the past two months, I've been asking you guys to submit questions so I could do a 10 year anniversary Q&A because again, this is the 10 year anniversary of my channel. So I want to basically do a Q&A type video. As you can tell, this isn't live, even though I probably set this to a live premiere. But whatever the case, you guys sent me a ton of questions through either YouTube or Instagram, and I've handpicked the ones that I know I have answers to. I'm gonna answer some questions from YouTube first uh, that I pulled up on my computer right here. What has been some of your favorite houses of all time at Halloween Horror Nights? Also, what do you think of this year's event, if you've been yet? Huh? I'm actually glad I waited till this trip to answer that question because I have now been to both Universal Studios Hollywood's Horror Nights and Universal Orlando's, which as I'm recording this is still happening. They end theirs uh, November 4th. So now I feel like I have a little more experience to answer both those questions. So to answer the latter half, what do I think of this year's event? It's been great. Uh, I loved both Horror Nights in Hollywood and Orlando. I personally prefer Hollywood's Horror Nights because the Terror Tram really makes that what it is. Uh, but Orlando's Horror Nights really goes all out with the size of their houses, the lore, the original mascots and icons. So they really have more experience in this, whereas Hollywood doesn't. But again, it being my hometown and me being a fan of the Terror Tram, I prefer Hollywood's just a little more. As for favorite haunted houses, I've liked a lot in the past years I've been to Halloween Horror Nights. Some favorites of mine include Killer Clowns from Outer Space, Alien vs. Predator, even though I hate those two AVP movies. Pandora's Box, which I think was 2019 and 2021. Those were really great haunted houses. And in terms of the Orlando stuff, they had some unique things that were only exclusive to them, like Dueling Dragons Choose Thy Faith, which was cool. I mean, for nostalgia purposes, I missed the Dueling Dragons roller coaster, so it was good to go through that. Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins was another good one from this year in Orlando. I mean, there was a lot of haunted houses I've been through during Horror Nights um, to pick and choose. I can't really decide my favorite, but there have been a ton of good ones, and I just gave you a list of them. What do you think about the future of AI potentially having a more prominent role in the TV and movie industry? I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I mean, okay, AI technically can be used, but it can't be used to replace people. Like the recent WGA agreement. That agreement said that artificial intelligence can be used, but it can't be credited as a writer. And the stuff that SAG has been fighting for when it comes to their fight against artificial intelligence is actually quite terrifying. And it's just pure common sense not to replace any workers with artificial intelligence because they don't have a human touch. These writers and actors actually do have a human touch. Something that AI can never do. I mean, we all saw Terminator 2, at the end of the movie where he goes, I know now why you cry, but it is something I can never do. Do you prefer streaming or physical media? As a movie collector, I'm worried about the future of physical media. What do you think the future will be like? Will physical media eventually disappear? I don't think it will straight up disappear. I mean, they still sell DVDs, uh, so clearly that market has gone on for a long time, even after Blu-ray just got followed up by 4K Ultra HD. I mean, with the recent news that Best Buy is no longer gonna be selling physical movies, it does suck, but uh, I don't think it will straight up disappear. I think there will be other stores that will continue selling it. And of course, there are companies out there like the Criterion Collection, Arrow Video, and Shout Factory that do pretty well with their sales of physical media, so I don't think it's going away. It's very rare that the old thing is killed off by the new thing. I mean, just remember when people were worried that uh, movies were gonna disappear because TV was introduced, and that clearly didn't happen. But to answer the first question, uh, physical media all the way. I mean, when it comes to movies, I prefer to own them on Blu-ray and DVD or 4K, uh, but in terms of video games, it can be a little different. Sometimes I will buy video games physically, but other times, just for convenience, I'll buy them digitally. What's the first film you've ever watched? Uh, and what's the most exciting film not released yet that we've seen a trailer for this year? I'll just answer the last question right now, Godzilla Minus One. 
I don't need to elaborate on that. But to answer the first question, the first movie I remember seeing in a theater, if we want to be specific, it would probably be the original Toy Story. Other than that, I cannot remember the very first movie I saw. I'd have to ask my parents uh, what that movie was, because they've told me what it is beforehand. I can never for the life of me remember the name, and I certainly know that it was a movie that they probably shouldn't have taken me to. Which of Disney's mega franchises are you excited for the future of more, the MCU or Star Wars? Huh? I don't know. I mean, Star Wars right now is probably doing a little better. I didn't like Mandalorian Season 3, but I really liked Ahsoka. And the MCU right now has been fumbling a bit. I know currently the MCU has not been the best. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Phase 5 outside of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. But I know that Marvel has a habit of looking at what doesn't work and just kind of fixing it. They don't ignore it or try to do course correction like they did with Star Wars. Uh, they try to go, okay, how can we go from here and make it better? Right now, I'm just more of a we'll wait and see kind of guy. I know that's probably not the answer you want, uh, but right now, I just don't have a clear answer for either. However, on that note of Star Wars, if you were given the task of being in charge of Lucasfilm, what would you do? The big problem that Lucasfilm has at the moment, I don't blame Kathleen Kennedy at all. I am not on the bandwagon of, oh, she's ruining Star Wars, get her out of there. I'm not. I am not on that bandwagon because there have been a lot of good things under her time as producer and head of Lucasfilm. Huh? But I think the big problem is that uh, Lucasfilm tries to rely more on the past and do a lot of course corrections. We need to move forward. We need new stories. We need new characters. We don't need to basically recycle what we've done before. But if you're going to make a show with pre-existing characters, make it more mature and not rely on fan service the way Andor did, or take the franchise in a brand new direction and show us something we've never seen before, like with Ahsoka. I will be reviewing Ahsoka on Life Day because I have a lot to say about it. What are your favorite foods and snacks to eat while watching a movie? I mean, of course I gotta have popcorn, but I also like to get an icy, and I like to mix it up, like put in cherry, blue raspberry, and if they have it, green apple. In terms of other food, I'll usually get Sour Patch Kids and Bunch of Crunch. I mean, whenever there's a new Star Wars movie out in theaters, I always make it a habit to get Bunch of Crunch. Because the first time I ever had Bunch of Crunch was when I saw The Phantom Menace in theaters for the first time. And it's just been a habit that I've had that I gotta have Bunch of Crunch when I watch a Star Wars movie. I did it with Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, and the entirety of the Disney movies that have been released in theaters. But just recently, I started getting pretzel bites. Usually, I get this whenever I'm in a certain mood. Like, if I'm seeing a movie early in the morning, then I'll get those. Like, I did that with Oppenheimer, and I just thought, you know what, I don't want a popcorn, I don't want candy or icy, I'll just get pretzel bites. And those do it for me. Who is your favorite Bruce Wayne slash Batman actor in the live-action movies? Michael Keaton's my favorite Batman, and Christian Bale's my favorite Bruce Wayne. Robert Pattinson has still only had one movie where he's played Batman, and he's mostly been Batman, so I don't really get a sense of how his Bruce Wayne is. And in the past, I've said that Ben Affleck was kind of the best of both worlds, but upon consideration, while he is a good Batman and Bruce Wayne, the writing and just Zack Snyder's clear misunderstanding of Batman as a character kind of ruins it for me. What if you were tasked with directing a Godzilla movie? Eh? What I mean by that is what monsters would be in it and what would the tone be. I actually made a video about this four years ago when Godzilla King of the Monsters was about to come out. Uh, I wasn't very specific on what the details were, but in terms of the monster roster, I'd have the main five. Godzilla, Rodan, Mothra, Ghidorah, and Mechagodzilla. And I feel like the kind of idea I want would probably span out to a trilogy. I'll put a link to that video right here. You can go check that out. But having more time to think about this idea, uh, it would sound like I was plagiarizing the MonsterVerse because it kind of involved the same progression and storylines that the MonsterVerse eventually came up with. So that's the vaguest idea I can give you. My idea for a Godzilla movie would probably be big enough to warrant a trilogy. I remember that you used to like Pixar's Good Dinosaur. Did you change your opinion? I thought it was decent. I... Uh, I still don't hate the Good Dinosaur like so many people seem to, but it's nowhere near Pixar's best. If anything, it's like among the bottom 
of their movies because uh, while it's a visually stunning movie in terms of the landscapes and the backdrops, uh, the cartoonish look of the dinosaurs is so off-putting. I just didn't feel like it had any ambition, and considering that it came out the same year as Inside Out, it was clearly obvious which of the two Pixar movies was the best. Now I'm going to take a break from answering questions on YouTube and answer some Instagram questions, and a lot of these come from the NGL uh, app, which basically you ask questions on Instagram anonymously, or any other social media platform. But anyway, are you married? No, I am not. No wife, no girlfriend, no fiance. Uh, I am single. If I was in a relationship of any kind, I probably would have mentioned it on this channel already. Who is your favorite X-Men character within the whole X-Men universe? Uh, I will actually answer this question a little later because I got a question very similar to this and I have a unique way of answering it since I'm here. Do you have any bad dating experiences? I've had some. Uh, I don't remember them all that well because they were bad experiences, and I'd just rather not think about those moments. Uh, but yeah, I've had some bad experiences when it comes to dating. Are you comfortable with delays with movie and TV shows due to the writer's strike? I mean, at this point, the writer's strike's all done. As of recording this, sag after is still on strike. Uh, I have no idea if they will have settled by the time this goes up, but considering what I've heard, they may be close to settling, again, as I'm recording this, so fingers crossed. But to answer the question, when it comes to delays in movies or TV regarding any strike, uh, I don't care if anything's delayed just as long as the people working on it get paid fairly. Have you ever had any surgery? If you're talking about like broken bones, uh, like here, broken arms or broken legs, no, I have not had anything like that. Uh, but if we're talking about oral surgery, I actually have had oral surgery uh, because I was born with a weird condition where my adult teeth didn't fully grow out. So the teeth you see here, those are fake, those are crowns I have, and there's actually two teeth in my bottom jaw that are missing and have not been replaced yet. So, uh, yes to oral surgery, but in terms of the basic stuff like this, or even brain surgery, no, I have not had any kind of surgery like that. Have you watched TV shows like House of the Dragon, Last of Us, and The Boys? Uh, Kind of, kind of, and no. I was completely burnt out with the finale of Game of Thrones and ultimately realized the only reason I was watching this show is because I kind of wanted to be part of the conversation and that finale just felt like I wasted my whole time watching that series. So House of Dragon, I heard it's really good even from people that were burned out by Game of Thrones also, but the scene in the first episode with the C-section just made me so uncomfortable that I said, no, I'm not watching this anymore. Last of Us, I've seen the first three episodes. I just never got around to finishing the rest of the series, and I want to. The Boys, I will take everyone's word that it's good. For me, that show just seems far too cynical for me to like, and I just don't feel like I'm in the mood to watch anything that's super cynical like The Boys. At least that's from what I've heard. Maybe I'll give it a shot one day, but I'm in no immediate rush to watch it. Have you been through all the attractions in Halloween Horror Nights? Uh, so this year, if we're talking about haunted houses specifically, uh, I've done all the houses at Universal Studios Hollywood. Exorcist Believer, Stranger Things, Last of Us, Chucky, Universal Monsters Unmasked, Evil Dead, Monsteros, The Monsters of Latin America, and Holidays in Hell. And if you count the Terror Tram, that also. At Universal Studios Florida, they also have Exorcist, Stranger Things, Last of Us, Chucky, and Monsters, but I haven't done those because they have them in Hollywood. But at Universal Studios Florida, I basically did all the houses that Hollywood does not have. Uh, Dueling Dragons, Yeti, Blood Moon, Darkest Deal, and Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins. So for Hollywood, yes. For Orlando, no. But considering that half the houses in Orlando were also in Hollywoods, I didn't see any reason to do them. Even if they were different, I just wanted to focus more on the new stuff. Do you have any piercings? No, I do not. I have no desire at all to get a piercing whatsoever because those look painful. Best X-Men movie? Uh, that's an easy question. If we're talking about team ensembles, it would have to be X-Men Days of Future Past. If we're talking about solo movies, which there aren't a whole lot of solo X-Men movies, Logan. 
hands down. But Deadpool is a close uh, second in terms of the solo stuff. I have one more Instagram question to answer before I head back to the YouTube questions, but I want to answer two questions that are very different at the same time because I have the same answer for both of them. The first is from Instagram. Can we all agree that the She-Hulk TV series makes Ang Lee's Hulk look like a masterpiece? So that's from Instagram. And from YouTube, the question with a similar answer is, will you ever consider re-watching and re-reviewing Battlefield Earth? I watched it again for a third time and actually think it's not that bad. Would you consider re-watching it? So to both questions, hell no! No, 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 no. Look, first, She-Hulk. She-Hulk is not the best. Uh, it has some issues, but I don't think it's unwatchable. It's got some moments that actually do work for me. And Tatiana Maslany is so good as both Jennifer Walters and She-Hulk that she makes the series what it is. Uh, I, again, I acknowledge there are problems with it, but I feel like it's gotten a level of hate that is just absurd. Like, it's not the worst thing in the world. As for Battlefield Earth, watching it for that one time was torture. Like, it is so bad that I would never want to put myself through that again. And the fact that you've seen it three times, um, I, I applaud you for that. And this is not the sarcastic clap. Anybody that can make through a truly awful, shitty movie more than once uh, has my respect. What's your favorite black and white movie? This one. What's your favorite Disney movie? This one. Do you prefer Star Trek or Star Wars? I grew up as being a Star Wars kid. I collected the toys, I watched the movies several times, but Star Trek I've learned to grow a much bigger appreciation because when I was younger, Star Trek was always seen as like very dry and stuck up, like just I don't know. There was something about Star Trek that never appealed to me as a kid. Having actually watched a handful of movies and some episodes of the original series and Next Generation, I've grown to appreciate Star Trek a lot more, and I want to continue that trend. Would you like to see Godzilla receive a new design in Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire? I think he looks good the way he is. We don't need to consistently change the look of a character from one movie to another within the same series. This Godzilla design is great. Uh, King of the Monsters and Godzilla Godzilla vs. Kong made the design really pop out uh, with the bigger spines and wider feet. There was no need to change what isn't broken. What are your thoughts on Courage the Cowardly Dog? I don't want to turn this Q&A into a what are your opinions on this movie type of thing, but Courage the Cowardly Dog is fun. It's bizarre, it's weird, it's frightening at points. It was a fun show back on Cartoon Network. What are your all-time favorite cartoons, ranging from Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, or Disney growing up? The one animated series on Cartoon Network that I always go to in terms of it being my favorite is Ed and Eddie. I loved it as a kid, I love it as an adult, but other shows like Dexter's Lab, Powerpuff Girls, Samurai Jack have really stood the test of time in my opinion. In terms of Nickelodeon, and some of my favorite cartoons growing up back then were Rugrats, Jimmy Neutron, and Fairly Odd Parents, and then SpongeBob, which is still going on to this day, but those early run of episodes were just great and hold up surprisingly well. I didn't really grow up with the Disney Channel. Cartoon Network was my main hub when it came to growing up as a kid. I did pop on Nickelodeon every now and then, but Disney Channel I hardly touched. So for those of you who were Disney Channel kids back in the day, sorry about that. This question I actually got five hours before I started recording. Besides doing reviews for a living, what else do you do in your spare time? Doing some physical activity? Uh, so first of all, I want to point out that I do not do this for a living. Uh, I would love to uh, basically do movie reviews on YouTube as my day job, but that's not my day job. But to answer the question, what else do I do in my spare time, I pretty much like go to theme parks. If I'm not too tired to do anything, I'll go out somewhere, I'll just play video games. Whenever I'm invited out by friends, I will take them up on their offer because I just like hanging out with people. So I admit that's not a very interesting answer to this question, but I do appreciate the question. All right, I got three more, technically four more questions left, and then we'll wrap up the video. What are your favorite movies from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and 2010s? Huh? Uh, that's a massive question, but I'll answer them as briefly as I can. For the 2010s, I made a two-part video of what my favorite movies of the last decade were, so you can go check out those videos on this channel. As for the rest of the decades, I'd say the 50s, Godzilla and Rear Window, 60s, uh, West Side Story and Yojimbo, 
70s, Jaws and Star Wars, 80s, Back to the Future and Aliens, 90s, Jurassic Park and Terminator 2, and the 2000s, Wally and the Dark Knight. So that's the easiest answer I could probably give you. I would actually love to do retrospective best of the decade lists in the future because it would be a quick excuse to talk about some of the movies that I love in those eras without doing full-on reviews. What obscure Toho Kaiju would you like to see return? I.e. Varen, Kamibas, or Gabra? I would like to see Biollante. I know that may not seem like an obscure Godzilla monster, but considering that she only appeared in one movie, I think she's due for a return. Destroya, I think, has a lot of potential because they essentially set up Destroya in Godzilla King of the Monsters. So we'll see if they decide to bring him back into the MonsterVerse. Bagon, the Godzilla creation that was scrapped for so many movies and then made it into the Super Nintendo game Super Godzilla. That's a character that I think we need to see in a Godzilla movie. I would love to see him make an appearance in a Japanese Godzilla movie first. And considering that Bandai had just recently released a toy of Bagon, the first one ever, I think that might become a reality more than we realize. So. Those are my answers. All right, one more question, and then I'll wrap this video up. But this question also goes back to one of the previous Instagram questions that I didn't answer. So on Instagram, the question is, who's your favorite X-Men character within the whole X-Men universe? But on YouTube, the question is from somebody else, I assume. Uh, it reads, who is your favorite X-Men character? Hero, villain, anti-hero. That's what's listed there. So I could tell you what my favorite X-Men characters are. But I'm at Universal Orlando Resort. Uh, Islands of Adventure has Marvel Superhero Islands, so I think rather than just telling you what my favorite X-Men characters are, I'll show you. So come on, come with me. All right, so I'm here at Marvel Superhero Island at Islands of Adventure to answer the final question of this Q&A. What's my favorite X-Men character? Uh, and there was a little category added to that in another question hero, villain, and anti-hero. Now this answer is going to be based off not just the movies, uh, but the animated series, and just the endless amounts of time I spent on the Marvel Wiki just reading the bios and history of these characters. So my favorite hero has to be Rogue, uh, mainly because of the animated series. I love the hair, the accent, and I just find her more interesting than some of the other X-Men heroes that have been in most of the movies, even if the way she was represented in the movies was not super accurate. My favorite X-Men villain has to be Magneto. Pretty obvious answer, but I find his background very interesting, and the dynamic he constantly has with Professor Xavier is an all-time classic in Marvel Comics. And he is currently getting knocked out to the ground, angry at me for some reason, when he should probably be taking out his frustration on Storm. I decided to move over to the Jurassic Park area to finish out this video because Marvel Superhero Island got a little too loud. Even though there's a waterfall behind me, uh, it's not as loud as all the music they blast out there. But anyway, to answer the hero and villain question, I showed you artwork that is showcased around Marvel Superhero Island of all those characters. I tried looking for artwork of the anti-heroes that I had an answer for already, but I couldn't find any artwork. So. My answer for the anti-hero section is Domino and Deadpool. Uh, Deadpool's the obvious answer because he's iconic, he's the merc with the mouth, he's funny, and the meta humor involving him is just perfection. As for Domino, uh, uh, comic-wise it's a really cool look, but I'm more familiar with Domino through Zazzy Beat's performance in Deadpool 2. Uh, she just seemed like a really great addition, and I hope she gets brought into the MCU because she's that good. But anyway, it's time to wrap up this video. I wanted to save that question for last because of where I was. Was, I thought, hey, I'll just go to Marvel Superhero Island and answer that question. So to see more of my theme park slash travel videos, uh, you can go subscribe to my other channel, Alexander Robinson Travel Channel, to see what I've been up to here at Universal Orlando. And at the time this video goes up, I will be back in Los Angeles to review more movies. Uh, I plan to review Miss Marvel before the Marvels comes out. Uh, I plan to review Marvels. I plan to review The Holdovers, which I saw just before leaving on this trip and Troll 3, which I did see early and again before this trip. So look out for those reviews in the future. But until then, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for submitting questions. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so. Don't forget to like the video, leave a comment, and hit the bell button to get notifications. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Letterboxd, Threads. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, have a good day and take care of yourselves.